we're back. Got it set up um, kind of in the front of my work area here. So we got a little bit extra room. Um, so what we have is the panel. Uh, we've got it all cut, we've got it drilled, we've got it rounded, we've got all the burrs taken off. Uh, so now it's ready to start sanding to get ready for primer, right? So now what we got to do is, um, now this has been painted before, but uh, most of the time we're just dealing with uh, bare sheet metal that's brand new. And a lot of times it'll have some rust on it or a lot of scratches and stuff that we need to smooth out and clean off. So I'll show you what to do. Uh, this one mainly we got to take off all the, uh, the paint and primer marks. There's probably a little bit of surface rust it looks like that's popped up just from handling it. Now anytime we're handling <clears throat> sheet metal, bare metal, um, you want to make sure that you protect your hands. So anytime you're dealing with sheet metal, especially when you're getting it ready for paint or primer, uh, typically primer at this point, um, we want to we want to protect the metal from our hands, and uh, the reason is our hands have oils that once they come into contact with the metal, bare steel, uh, they're going to want to start rusting. Okay, so you might end up touching this today. Tomorrow you'll come in and you'll see a bunch of rusty fingerprints. So from this point on, anytime we're handling sheet metal after it's been cut and fabricated, from this point on, you want to wear latex gloves. Okay, so just some latex gloves. This is also going to protect you because we're going to start using some solvents to clean it. Um, and again, we don't want to get our oils on the panel. So if for some reason you grabbed it and you didn't have gloves on it, um, you want to take a little bit of solvent, acetone, or a degreaser and clean that area to get the oils off before you proceed. Okay. So what we have is the metal. We've got our gloves on. I'm going to grab a little bit of acetone and I usually keep it in a small square bottle. Okay. So acetone. It's just a general solvent. We use it to clean panels uh, of any grease or oil, and we also use it to clean um, spray guns. All right. So grab a couple of paper towels, and I usually recommend you wiping each side off at least twice, just to make sure you get everything off. And just for demonstration purposes, we're just going to do one side, but uh, in reality, you're going to do both sides, especially if it's a brand new piece of metal. Okay. So what I typically do is I'll grab a, a paper towel, and you don't need a whole lot, just squirt a little bit on there. You don't need to flood it, okay? And you're gonna wipe it down. Right? And it, acetone dries very quickly. So only do as much as you can handle before it evaporates. And you can see all the dirt that's coming off of the panel, okay? So that's telling me I need to clean it again. So I'm gonna grab another clean paper towel. Don't keep wiping them with the same paper towel because you end up just smearing the dirt that's already on the towel, right? So get a clean one. Spray it down again. And give it another wipe. And you might need to do it two or three times until you're satisfied. But the cleaner the better. You want to start getting in the habit of keeping everything nice and clean, right? You can see a whole lot less coming off now from the first time, right? So that's what we're looking for. This is probably okay. We're going to go ahead and start sanding even with that. Throw these away in the trash can. All right, now what we're dealing with here, you're going to start sanding this with a palm sander, right? So the, the more common ones nowadays are the palm sanders. A lot of shops might still have the DAs. These are called DAs or dual action sanders. These will do an orbital pattern and they'll also turn into a grinder. Uh, kind of old school, a little heavy. Uh, most people have gone towards the uh, palm sanders a lot lighter, uh, easier to work with, especially for long periods of time. Okay, now these are set up with Velcro backing pads, so the paper that you have to use needs to have the Velcro. It's called Hook It, Hook It 2, I believe, is the one with the, uh, the soft Velcro on the pad. There's another one that's the exact opposite, an older version, where the paper has the harder uh, hooks. Okay, these have the loops. So, for this, uh, for, for the cleaning the bare metal, we're using 80 grit. So it's the 80 grit on the uh, six inch orbital palm sander discs. And again, these just pop right on there. Try to get them as centered as possible so you don't have it off centered too much. Right? If it's not good, you just want to reposition it, peel it off, and stick it again. All right? You basically want to have the same amount hanging off all the way around or close to it just to keep it from uh, getting off centered 
right? Now with palm sanders, let the sandpaper do the work. With most power tools, you want to let the sandpaper, the, uh, the abrasives do the work. You don't want to bear down on this. You don't want to push it too hard. Um, if the sandpaper is not cutting anymore, don't push harder. Replace the sandpaper. These only last for a certain amount of time, especially on bare metal. It chews them up pretty quickly. So let the sandpaper do the work. Don't overwork the tool because you will burn the tool out. It burns up the bearings um, and then they're trash, right? So we don't run them wide open. We don't put a lot of pressure on them. Let the machine and the paper do the work, okay? now. When you're using a palm sander, we typically keep it as flat as possible on the surface, okay? There are occasions when you'll need to tip it a little bit, right? To get into like a low spot or if you got a little uh, extra rust or something, you got to get off a little bit more aggressively. But for the most part, you run them flat, okay? And if you keep using the edge, right, instead of the, the whole piece, you're just going to, all you're going to do is end up wearing, wearing it off on the edges, not even touching the middle. And after probably 10, 15 seconds, the edge is already worn out. It's not going to do anything after that, right? So use the whole disc. Use up the paper uh, completely. Don't run it on the edge on everything, even though it might seem like it's more aggressive. Uh, in the long run, you're just going to wear out the paper, and it's not going to really do anything, okay? So the other thing to note on these is they, they all pretty much have a, an air adjuster. So if you pick up one and it doesn't work, there's a chance that the air is completely off, right? So let's plug this in. Okay, you push the trigger, nothing happens. I can hear a little bit of air, but nothing's happening. Adjust your air. They all have them here somewhere tucked underneath. Okay. Now we're not gonna run it full blast because that of course will burn up the motor quicker. So you wanna have a, kind of the right amount. That's sound a little bit low. Listen to the machine. Listen to what it's telling you, okay? So, kind of in the middle, not too high, not too low, just right, right? Now, if you're sanding this and there's a lot of paint or a lot of rust on there, you might want to uh, think about getting a, a respirator or at least one of the paper masks. Uh, for just bare steel, it's not that big a deal. You're not really putting off much dust of anything. Uh, you're basically just getting it clean, okay? So, what I want to do is I want to go over this whole thing nice and even, and I want to make sure it's nice and shiny, new steel. No discoloration, no rust, no paint, no primer, okay? And at the same time, I'm also going around and smoothing out any of the edges that might still be a little bit rough around the holes, uh, just to make it as nice as possible. You want to kind of, I just say, kind of detail out your panel. And it goes with anything, whether it's a, a, just a flat panel for practice or a skateboard or an actual car. You want everything to be as perfect as possible, even though perfection is hard to uh, come by. You want everything as, as nice as you can possibly do it, as clean, as straight, um, as detailed uh, as possible, all right? So let's get sanded. and clean. If you kind of go around randomly, it's going to seem like it never gets done. Right? If you're just kind of all over the place, nothing gets done. So just kind of focus on an area and just start working it nice and slowly. Uh, the other thing I wanted to note, um, these benches are adjustable so you can change the, the height. Also though, um, if your panel doesn't fit on the bench or it's too flimsy, back it up with a little bit of wood or another piece of metal just to keep it from flexing too much. Because as you're sanding, it, you're putting a little bit of pressure on there. So you don't want it to flex too much, right? The other issue is these things fall on the ground a lot. So if you have something under there to kind of support it, it, it lessens the risk of it falling on the ground. Okay? <laughs> You think that's a better thing? You think that's a better thing? You think that's a better
productive, you're not getting as much sanding done as you were when you first started. So every once in a while, stop and check your sandpaper. Feel it. You're going to feel the difference. Start with a new piece and you'll feel a, a, the worn piece is a lot smoother. So it's not going to bite as much. It's not going to do as much cutting. So periodically check it. If it feels too smooth, peel it off. That one will go in the trash and pop on a new one and continue on. Okay. And you'll also notice as I'm sanding, there was a little bit of water shooting out. Um, I don't have the best air dryers at home. Uh, so a little bit of moisture, a little condensation forms while you're sanding. Uh, so your panel might get a little bit of moisture on there. Uh, not a huge deal. I'll usually dry it off and continue sanding. Um, it can be a problem in a lot of shops uh, with moisture. Uh, we used to take and wrap rags or towels around the uh, fittings to keep water from spraying out. Uh, just depends on the system that you're using. Right? So that was one piece of sandpaper. So I should be able to do this side with two pieces of sandpaper. Um, You'll probably end up using a lot more if there's a lot of rust or a lot of other problems on it. Okay, so let's continue. So we've got the panel sanded up pretty nicely, okay? It's looking good. And if you notice when I was sanding, about the only time I really stood it up on the end was at the very end when I had a couple little spots. Uh, there were probably little nicks or something in the metal, little dent uh, that I had to kind of get in there and dig out the uh, paint. But overall, came out pretty decent. Came out pretty decent there. All right. So uh, next step is going to be to hang it up and get it primed. Now remember to wear gloves as we're hanging it, as we're handling it, as you're carrying it around the shop. Um, you're probably going to notice there's still going to be a little bit of surface rust. Like if we live, let it sit over a weekend or something, just the moisture in the air will cause a little bit of surface rust. Uh, before you prime it, you're just going to have to give it a quick sand and a clean um, to clean it off and get it ready again. All right. Uh, the, the best thing is to not let it sit for too long between bare metal and getting it primed. Okay. Not bad. All right, now let's say that we left a little bit of rust on there and we primered over the rust. It's going to look fine, right? You're not really going to notice anything. But let's say this was on a car, okay? You were doing a restoration or something on an old car. Um, you had a little surface rust. You thought it's going to be okay, right? So you primered over it. Looks fine. You paint it. Uh, beautiful paint job. 
But then in uh, six months later, all of a sudden you start noticing a little bit of bubbling, um, a little bit of roughness. Um, that rust is continuing to grow underneath the paint, okay? Uh, there's a saying that rust never sleeps. You have to get rid of the rust. It will come back and haunt you later on. So again, the better the prep, it all starts right here, right? So this is where you have to spend the time and all your preparation. The painting portion is a very small, small portion of the process. A lot goes into getting everything ready, whether it's metal, wood, fiberglass, plastic, whatever. Preparation is key, okay? Preparation is key. All right, what's going on everybody? Um, I'm here in the booth at school. Uh, we're getting ready to uh, take the next step on these panels. So we already showed the, uh, the panels being uh, cut. And I, I've got two going at the same time. So this one of them will be the uh, first panel as far as the old school graphics with the uh, diamond pattern in the middle. And the other one will be um, just whatever we decide to put on there, probably with some computer uh, stencils. Um, but for right now, we want to make sure that, uh, so we've taken it from a bare piece of steel, we've had it cut, we've rounded the corners, we've drilled it, we've sanded it, right, and it's ready for primer, okay? Now, the next step on this, so you see I've got it hung up, so the holes that we drilled in there, they're for hanging up so we can get to both sides. And also, once it's done, you can hang it up on a wall for display, okay? So I've just taken some hooks, right, the hooks that come with the hanging racks, just put them through the hole, hang them up. Okay, and it usually works pretty well. Now you want to make sure on these, I'm just doing the one side, but when you work on yours, you're going to be doing both sides of the panel. Um, so make sure you can access both sides. Don't have it up against the wall. I usually have it kind of in the middle of the spray booth to make it easier to spray both sides, right? So the next thing I want to do is I want to double check that it's been sitting overnight. And a lot of times, um, moisture from the air will cause a little bit of surface rust. The other problem is um, if you actually touch it without gloves, it'll probably leave a little bit of a uh, rust where there's fingerprints, and if that's the case, uh, you take a red scotch right, okay, it's hung up, and we just want to look it over and look for any kind of uh, reddish or brownish spots that are going to be surface rust, okay? So if you see anything that doesn't look right, take your scotch right and give it a little scuff until that color, that, that discoloration or the, the rust is gone, okay? Uh, these are looking pretty decent, just a couple little spots right there, all right? Again, the cleaner the better, right? This this would represent uh, this would best represent um, working on a car, right? You're doing a restoration, let's say you're taking the car down to bare metal. You want it as clean as possible. Um, you don't want any rust on it. You don't want any uh, anything that's going to cause whatever you're putting on there, whether it's primer or, or body fillers, to pop up. So as clean the cleaner the better. Um, take your time. Don't rush it. Double check it. Okay. Next thing we're going to do once we know all the rust is off, uh, I'm going to take the uh, little degreaser, right? Degreaser and a couple of clean paper towels, right? They're a little watered up, but that's all right. So a couple of clean paper towels, and I recommend clean paper towels over uh, shop rags. Uh, these are these have never been used, right? They're straight out of the dispenser. There's there's no chance of uh, grease or anything coming off of these and going onto your panel. Uh, a lot of times guys will take uh, rags, shop rags, or rags from a delivery service and use them to wipe off cars, but the problem is that transfers a lot of oils and grease, uh, silicones, can, any kind of contaminant you can think of, um, is transferred back onto the panel, okay? So never use used or rewashed uh, towels to clean a panel right before paint or primer, okay? So paper towels, degreaser, and what I want to do is I want to spray it on. I don't want to soak it. I don't need it running off the panel. I just want to get everything damp. And then I want to make sure I wipe it good with the paper towels. And you might have to do it two or three times until it's completely clean. Uh, whatever it takes, you got to do it, okay? Uh, but what I want to do is I don't want to leave it to dry on the surface. I want to make sure I wipe it as much as I can as it's drying. Um, once you, you get the majority of it off, there'll be a little bit of a, a residue that will evaporate, but you want to make sure that you actually do the wiping to get all the contaminants off, okay? So, I just want to spray it, just make sure everything's covered, paper towels, and start wiping. And you want to make sure you get everything, don't leave anything unwiped, right? And what you're going to see, after your first wipe, is how much dirt comes off of it. Okay, so it's a lot of a lot of uh, 
it's from sanding, right? A lot of sanding dust that's coming off of there, so I want to wipe it down a second time. Same thing. Just grabbing two paper towels clean. Don't reuse the ones you just used. Every time you re-wipe it, get clean paper towels, otherwise you're, you're smearing what you already took off, right? So I'm just going to spray it again. Okay? And re-wipe it. Each time you wipe it, it should come out cleaner. Um, you'll, you'll, it's your decision when to stop, really. I think this will be fine. So two to three times of wiping should be fine. Right. It's warm out today, so it's going to evaporate pretty quickly. But uh, that's what we're looking for, okay? Now, from, from here on, once you've wiped it, don't touch it with bare hands. Okay, you want to make sure anytime you touch it from here on out, you have some gloves on. Okay. Now the primer. What's the primer there for? Okay. The primer is there. Uh, paint doesn't like to stick to metal by itself, so it needs something in between. Okay. So primers or sealers uh, help with the adhesion to metal. Okay. Otherwise, the paint you can paint it, it'll look fine, but it's going to start peeling off. Okay. So we want to do a little bit of a primer on this. The other thing that primers do, besides uh, giving you a good adhesion to uh, whatever you're trying to do, whether it's wood, plastic, metal. Um, the other thing it does is it fills any imperfections, okay? So what it does is we're using it as a filler, so any scratches, any little uh, little dents, any little dings, very small ones, it's going to surface over those, and when we sand it flat, they should disappear, okay? Let's hope, right? So it, it gives us filling capabilities and adhesion properties, okay? So it's a dual dual purpose uh, thing. Uh, and basically this is the, the foundation for everything we do afterwards. So if you don't do this right, nothing else is going to go right, right? So if it's not primary right, it's probably going to peel when you start masking on there, right? If you don't uh, put enough primer on there, you're going to have to sand, you're going to sand through to the metal and have to reprime, okay? So it's best to start out at the very foundation, at the beginning, properly. Okay, so we want to make sure we get this sanded properly. I want to make sure I get any little uh, imperfections, any rust, any surface rust off of this because it's been sitting for a day. Uh, and I want to make sure it's clean and everything before we prime. Okay? Uh, when we come back, we'll blow it off and uh, we'll start priming. I'll probably end up putting uh, three coats of primer, nice heavy coats, um, completely you know, top to bottom, and we'll go from there. All right?